Hollywood has mastered the art of manipulating our emotions, not only using storytelling and music, but also using color really subtly. Now you can do that too in your paintings. Let me show you how. With an infinite range of color mixes to choose from, how do you go about choosing the best one for your subject? Well, often a subject will suggest a color idea to you. For instance, this bright red boat inspired me to complement it with a subdued green background. And painting in this sunny alpine location inspired me to warm everything in the painting. So I just limited my palette to ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and white, and ended up with a warmer, lighter painting. And this idyllic scene of my daughter at the beach inspired a high saturation color treatment. So the happy colors. Now there's no one right solution. You simply need to try out ideas and see what feels right for you. And saying that, there are some basic ideas that you can start with. The three aspects of color, hue, value, and saturation, all work together to inspire emotion within you. So you need to be aware of how these aspects of color affect you emotionally. Let's take a look at that. So what effect does the hue have on our emotions? We may associate some hues more strongly with specific emotional states than with others. Uh, so for instance, vibrant red is often associated with heat, anger, danger or passion. Green is associated with cool, calm, growth, health or sickness. Yellow is associated with warmth, happiness and energy. I could go on for every color, but what hue means to you is what's really important. So what about the saturation of colors? How does that affect the mood of a painting? Highly saturated colors are often felt as having more energy and happiness, and that's why kids love them. Whereas low saturation colors have a more subdued energy to them and are often felt as having more emotive depth. And how does the value of the colors affect the mood of a painting? Well, in general, the higher a color's value is, the more it emotes a feeling of positivity because we associate light with life and darkness with death. So the overall spread of values through an image is hugely important in how it feels to the viewer. So a low key image where you have a majority of dark values will emote a low energy, often a negative feel. A mid key, which has a majority of mid range values, has a neutral energy feel. And a high key, which has a majority of light values, gives a positive vibe. This is one of the keys to the global popularity of the Impressionists who often combine saturated colors with high key values. And those are both positively emotive. So you can see how the three aspects of color, the value, hue, and saturation work together to create the mood of the painting. In Mastering Color 1, you were introduced to the Gamut Mask tool for creating color harmonies in your work. In the previous chapter, you learned how to alter your images digitally. Now you're going to use both of these powerful tools together to give your paintings emotion. So first of all, we need to choose a scene to paint. I want you to choose something that really inspires you. So that can be your own images or feel free to use the photos provided. So what we're gonna do is paint the same image in two completely different moods. So your first step is to choose the moods that you're gonna paint. So for example, somber versus fun, or angry versus peaceful, or dreary versus hopeful, something like that. So basically choose two moods that are really quite different. Next, I want you to think about each mood and consider what would be the best color treatment to portray that mood. So for instance, I chose somber as a mood, and I thought that low key, low saturation, blues and grays would represent that mood best. Then I chose fun as my second mood as a contrast to somber, and I thought that mid key, high saturation, primary triadic color scheme would represent fun the best. Step three is to digitally dabble with your photo to try and achieve that color idea as near as possible. So for instance, for the somber mood, 
the low key was the first thing I said so I'm going to go into light and exposure and just lower the exposure so everything gets a little darker that means it's lower key next I wanted to make it low saturation so I go into color and saturation lower the saturation and that increases the amount of gray next thing I wanted to do was make it more blue and gray I've already made it more gray so let's just go into color and cast which is sometimes called temperature and just push it more into the blue realm so we're making it cooler instead of warmer so that's before I made the adjustments and after so then I got the second mood which was fun and I'm going to adjust that to try and get as close as I can to that color idea that I've had in this case it's already mid key it's already sort of primary triadic so I'm just raising the saturation not putting it all the way up so it doesn't look too gaudy and that's about as close as I can get to that idea so that's before and that's after so here's what we've got so far somber and fun and the reason that we've done this is to help you visualize what that mood and what that color scheme will look like in the final painting it's not going to be exactly the same but it helps you to get some idea before you start okay so the next step is to use the gamut mask tool to determine the range of colors that you're going to use for each painting so let's have a look at the gamut mask tool I think I'll use the UMB color wheel um, if you click on the little question mark here it tells you the UMB color wheel is a truer representation of how we perceive color so I quite often like to use that so I'll just click on that one and it changes the color wheel and I wanted it to be a little darker and a little grayer so I lower the saturation okay uh, I also wanted more blues than anything else so I'll move the blue violet that one there up to the top so I know that that's my dominant color and then I'll just choose a mask to exclude some of these colors maybe this one here and move that up so that includes more of the blue violet there so you can see I've got mainly blue violet going down into grays and a little of the cyan on that side and a little of the violet on that side so I think that's a, a good start for the color scheme that's going to represent somberness we'll save that one and start again this time I want a mid key so I'm going to leave that one where it is and I want fully saturated colors because this is all about fun so that's up as high as it can go and it's a triadic color scheme so click the triangle and um, just move this around to where I want it maybe have a little more green in so you can see it's excluding colors here and including colors here so when I mix the colors on my palette I'm only going to be mixing what's in here and it may be a little darker or a little lighter but it will still be this color range so we've chosen our color schemes now how do we mix those colors to use in our painting here's my standard palette of colors and let's try and mix the somber quiet palette first it's a cool blue so I'm going to start with my cool blue here which is phthalo blue I want a big chunk of this and I'm going to gray it down just a little bit with some red and some yellow ochre very very dark so it's hard to see exactly what color it is until you add white to it so let's take a chunk of it move it down and add some white let's take another piece of that move that down and add some white to that and we'll do the same again now we've got four distinct values there and you could do as many as you like maybe five or nine that's pretty typical but I'm just going to start with four to keep it nice and simple now I'm going to move on to the next color which is on the left of the blue there and it's a turquoisey gray so again I'll start with the 
cool blue. Make sure you start with a lot because as you saw, you need to use that pile to create the piles underneath it. So now I'm going to add a yellow ochre and a little red. So I've used more yellow in this one to push it more towards green. I didn't jump straight to this bright yellow because it's still a gray color that I'm going for. So I used a yellow that was more gray, which is the yellow ochre. Maybe I'll add a touch of that. Okay, now let's add some white to it. Okay, the next color is the violety blue on the right hand side. So I'll start with the blue which leans towards red, which is ultramarine blue. Again, it's a little gray, so I'm going to just add some burnt sienna to gray it down a little bit. Move it down, add some white. Now because the ultramarine isn't as strong a pigment as the thalo, it doesn't need as much white to lighten the value of it. So just be aware of that. Now there's a fourth color which I could mix which is a very gray orange. So why don't I start with an orange which is already gray which is that since brown is just a dark orange and let's add some blue to it gray it down a little bit, bit more. Now I'll lighten that with some white. Okay, so that's all the colors I'm going to use in this painting. So I'll just move it over to the side here. And we'll jump in here with some darks and the foliage. Pretty thin in the darks, so using a fair amount of painting medium. Just going to move through the painting going from darkest dark to the next lightest dark and so on and the paint's going to get thicker as we get lighter and lighter. Now of course you can mix any of these colors to use in the painting. So for instance I want to mix that one and that one. You'll see I've got the digitally dabbled resource photo of the somber mood attached to the top of the palette there and Although I'm using that as inspiration for the painting, I'm certainly not chained to that. In fact, you could put the colors on your palette anywhere in this painting. You could have the, the sky green and the trees purple if you wanted. Really just got to follow your intuition on that. Just remember the main goal is to build a color mood and to have fun. So here's the whole process again. You've got your photo, you decide what mood you want, and what color changes would best represent that mood. You digitally dabble with your photo to get an approximation of that mood. You use the gamut mask tool to create a color scheme and then you mix some color strings based on that color scheme and then you paint your painting using only those colors or mixtures of those colors. And the amazing thing is it actually works. You can see that this has created a really somber feeling painting. So we've really changed the whole mood of this scene and now we're telling the audience what to feel about this scene. I can see in retrospect that I could have made the mood even more somber if I had made my color mixtures more gray. But that's the great thing about this process is that it opens up this world of possibility for creating emotion with your paintings. And now you have all the tools you need to start exploring this exciting new world. Enjoy.